All right, so today we're going to be assembling a handheld gaming console, uh, more specifically a GPI Case 2 with a Compute Module 4 installed running RetroPie. So in the past, I've done this with, you know, a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B, I believe, and it plays games uh, excellently. I mean, predominantly Nintendo 64 or other games like that that are supported on similar consoles with similar hardware. Um, but the main disadvantage was the lack of portability. So you would basically need to plug it into a uh, monitor and a nearby power outlet, um, as well as the one or more controllers you would need to play the games. Here, with the RetroFlight GPI Case 2, all that is essentially consolidated into one. So this is very similar to a Game Boy console with an integrated display screen, um, directional buttons, uh, select start, a few other features, as well as left and right um, back bumpers. Now, in order to actually assemble this, we'll need three specific components. Well, we'll need this case, which also comes with a dock that allows you to mount it um, to an external monitor or to add additional controllers. Um, we'll also need a compute module. So here we have the Raspberry Pi compute module 4 with one gigabyte of, or maybe two gigabytes of RAM, uh, but no eMMC storage. So this is particularly important for the installation of uh, RetroPie in that it will have trouble accessing any external storage devices like an uh, external micro SD card if uh, eMMC storage is present. And in terms of storage, well, we'll just be using a simple 128 gigabyte um, micro SD card, which we will flash uh, RetroPie on and just put on some preloaded games. So yeah, this is kind of going to be my first shot at seeing if this is actually possible and how hard it would be to troubleshoot this. There's relatively not that much documentation and probably for good reasons given that Nintendo probably doesn't want people allegedly uh, playing games that they may or may not have purchased on their console uh, or um, third party consoles rather. So I'll give it a shot. We'll encounter any troubleshooting notes we'll take. And of course, uh, I'll also post a link to the tutorial that I was following in order to assemble this. All right, so we were able to install RetroPie on the RetroPie GPI case 2 using the same instructions that were, um, <clears throat> or that will be mentioned in the description of this video. The one thing that wasn't covered is how to actually transfer games onto the operating, uh, onto the system. And there are a couple ways to do it. But given that there isn't a easy way to directly access the SD card while it is in the console, I opted for the SSH approach. So we can basically um, SSH into uh, the Pi. And well, that's essentially what I did over here using my laptop. So the first thing I want to verify is that all the storage, the 128 gigabytes or so, was being uh, recognized. And it has, so we've got about 110 gigabytes uh, worth of games we can load onto the system. Now, in terms of actually transferring the files, you could use something like PuTTY, but honestly, I'm not a huge fan of headless environments, so I opted for something like FileZilla. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly connect again. Um, in fact, I might just have to restart this. Okay, let's connect to the server. And you'll see that there's, um, well, the Pi directory. Within that Pi directory, uh, you'll see RetroPi. Within RetroPi, you'll see ROMs. And within ROMs is where you want to upload whatever ROMs you've downloaded into their uh, respective folder. So just to try this out, we are going to locate the SMES folder uh, find the new Super Mario Bros. game, uh, which I am definitely not pirated, if anyone asks. Um, this would be under N. Or maybe Super Mario Bros. All-Star. 
and there's quite a few games on this, so it might take a while to actually find it. Um, there we go. So we just right click on this and we upload it while we're located in the SNES directory. It's a fairly small game, so almost instantly it finishes the upload. Now, it might not be recognized uh, immediately, so we'll just simply turn off the console, which will actually execute the safe shutdown script. Um, the safe shutdown script is sort of an optional add-on uh, to the RetroPie installation, um, specifically for use in the GPI case 2. And what this allows you to do is, you know, give sufficient time to properly save any ongoing games or files. Uh, but more importantly, it essentially allows the Pi to recognize when it is in the dock state versus when it's not. When it's not in the dock state, it'll um, default to its output being the LCD screen directly connected to the GPIO headers of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, compute module for that is. In the dock state, it'll default to the HDMI output on the dock itself. The reason I haven't demonstrated the use with the dock is that it only realistically works. Um, here, let me actually just note this. Um, only works when you have uh, controllers. So as you can see, now we have a new Super Nintendo section over here. See if I can get this to focus a little bit better. I also have the dust cover on the uh, screen, um, which is why it seems kind of dirty, but I'll remove that once I'm done. Um, and the real question is, will it detect audio? Well, no way to find out. Yeah, I guess that's a yes. Turn up the audio, turn up the brightness. All right, off to a good start so far. And um, let's try and find the original one. 1985, I believe it's this one. Start a new file. One player game. And just to clarify, at the time of recording, YouTube didn't have any strict guidelines on gameplay of emulators, and I found YouTube videos of other people. <sighs> well, okay, I think that uh, sufficiently demonstrates my capabilities in playing these kinds of games. Yeah, it runs without any issue. Um, sound effects are on point. The timer does run a little bit faster, and the reason being is that the clock... A lot of older games uh, typically have their in-game timers restricted based on um, the clock rates of the CPUs or core processor units. In this case, Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, even though it's, you know, by today's standards, not the most powerful hardware. I'll turn off this uh, audio just because I don't want it to be flagged by Nintendo by any means. Um, there we go. So, long story short, um, the clock runs a little bit faster just because the CPU clock is faster than what was the case in, you know, uh, about a dozen or so years ago. Not a big issue. If it really is, we can adjust um, in-game timing and latency and other features like that. But I think this is a good um, starting point for anyone who wants to build their own handheld gaming console. The Retroflag GPI Case 2 basically meets all of the necessary requirements. It isn't too hard to set up. It requires a little bit of knowledge for um, SSH file transfer, but other than that, I had to honestly do very little Linux-based programming, which, you know, as a Windows user, is something that everyone really dreads. Um, and yeah, you know, I'll post a few videos if I ever figure out any cool features that um, I haven't really covered. So yeah, here's to retro gaming.